Doing your flea and tick treatment for your Great Dane is very, very important, and you don't want to miss out on it. But when should that happen? Well, we're here to help. Welcome back to the Fenrir Great Dane Show. My name's Joe and I'm a certified canine leader here at FenrirCanineLeaders.com. We are dedicated to helping you learn everything you could possibly want to know about the Great Dane and then how to become a high level canine leader so you can raise your very own. So if you're new here, don't forget to subscribe and turn on that notification bell so you never miss a future upload. Doing your flea and tick treatment for your Great Dane may not seem that important, but it really is and you don't want to miss out on doing it. So when should that happen? Well, today we're going to be tuning into a webinar that canine behaviorist and founder of FenrirCanineLeaders.com, Will, has recorded all about when you should be flea and ticking your dog. Getting a new puppy is a wonderful experience, and if you are planning for a new canine family member right now, you will be busy getting everything ready, no doubt. Puppies are work, but they also make our lives richer and happier. Maybe you already have been to the local vet and set up an appointment for your first visit. After all, vaccinations are vital to protect your dog. But what about flea and tick treatments? Well, in today's webinar, we will discuss at what age your puppy will need their treatments for inner and outer parasites. And we will begin with the first set of parasite treatment, which your puppy should already have by the time that you bring them home. If you buy your puppy from a good breeder, they will give you a pet passport. This booklet lists all the treatments that your dog has received from their breeder's uh, veterinarian. These include medication for inner and outer parasites, as well as their first set of jabs. Typically, the first health check and deworming on puppies is done two to three weeks after birth, then between six and eight weeks of age. They get their first vaccination and another set of treatment to protect against fleas, worms and other parasites at that time. Your job will be to follow up with these two sets of vaccination boosters. These are usually spaced apart 28 days from one another. Ideally, the recommended dates for the next jabs will already be marked on the pet passport. And on these vet visits, your dog will also receive their next set of inner and outer parasite treatment. Now, young dogs need all the nutrients from their food to grow in a healthy way. This also means they absolutely need protection from intestinal worms. And whilst uh, outer parasites do not hinder a puppy's digestion, they can cause serious discomfort, disease, and in extreme cases, a dangerous blood loss. Therefore, puppies need to be protected against fleas, ticks, mites, and insect bites. The good thing about these parasite treatments is they do not require separate vet visits. Either your vet will apply the appropriate medication themselves as a part of your consultation, or they will package them up for you. In the case of the latter, ask your vet to write down all the details for you, such as when exactly to give the medication to your puppy, how much of it, and whether to give it with food or on an empty stomach. Now, usually parasite medication for puppies comes in the form of a tasty pill that your dog will usually eat without any problems. In case they don't, use a piece of soft sausage or butter or cheese to hide the pill in. If you find yourself having trouble getting your puppy to swallow the medicine, ask your vet for help and they have tons of clever ways to do it. As we said earlier in this video, your breeder's vet will already have treated the entire litter for parasites. All you need to do is keep up a regular schedule of treatment, which your vet will also be happy to provide. Also, many vets will send you an email or a text message before your dog's next parasite treatment is due. So let's talk about the kind of parasites that puppies can get, and we'll start with internal parasites. Now, most people immediately think of intestinal worms when they hear the term internal parasites. But one of the most dangerous internal parasites for dogs is the heartworm, which is transmitted via mosquito bites. Heartworm prevention for puppies usually comes in the same pill as their deworming medication, but you want to double check with your vet uh, and that this is the case. And whether or not the prevention is even needed, as you may be living outside of a heartworm risk area. Puppies can also usually get roundworms from their mothers. These spaghetti-like worms are the most common intestinal parasites in dogs. They can be seen in the stool, especially after a deworming treatment. Now, tapeworms will lodge in the small intestine of dogs who can become infected by eating rodents or fleas that then carry the worm. Tapeworms can appear in the excrement again, looking like grains of rice. Now, hookworm infection is often caused by puppies eating other dogs' excrements and they cannot be detected in the dog's stool, so you won't see them. 
whipworm infections are quite serious and can cause uh, bloody diarrhea. Infection comes from swallowing contaminated soil, where the worm's eggs can survive there for years. There are some of the more common internal parasites, but there is also external parasites. And external parasites take nutrients from the dog's blood and can live either on top of the skin or within it. Some of them only cause superficial skin issues, whilst others are carriers for other more dangerous organisms. Lice, fleas and mites are the most common external parasite in dogs. Apart from pesky itching, they can cause severe allergy in young dogs. If your puppy is affected, you should treat all the pets in your household as well as their sleeping spaces. Ticks are quite a common external parasite in dogs. They mostly jump on the dog when walking through tall grass and scrubs or in the forest. Usually ticks cause only local skin irritations, but they can carry Lyme disease, which is why preventative treatment is a must for all dogs. And that wraps up our quick webinar about at what age your puppy will need parasite treatments and some rough overviews of the things that you need to be aware of again we always advise that we're not vets so speak to your local veterinarian as part of getting a new puppy and they'll be able to give you much more detailed advice this is just a really good starting place so i hope you enjoyed it and i'll see you on the next webinar there you have it guys some really useful information from all there all about when you should be doing your flea and tick treatment for your great dane i really hope you enjoyed today's video if so get involved in the comments down below as we would love to hear from you don't forget to subscribe and turn on that notification bell as we have two dedicated videos coming out every single week so i can't wait to see you in the next episode of the fenrir great dane show